Hello, 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 beautiful soul family. Welcome back to day two. I'm so excited to be here with you. So excited we made it through yesterday without too many voice hiccups. Hopefully today will be even better. Thank you for bearing with me um, if I do have to pause for a cough. <clears throat> All right, so how was the I am the one video? How did you love it? I'm just going to assume you loved it, even though I know our little trauma voice, trauma demon doesn't love it. Um, but it, I am so grateful for those of you that did it, who were brave enough to, to move through and who recognize the importance of allowing yourself to be seen. Because we're no good if we incarnate here in this world. We choose to suffer the, the challenges of the traumatic childhood or just being in this society. If we choose to play small, if we hide our light, if we don't allow people to see us, we can't do what we came here to do. And so I want you to give yourself a pat on the back, give yourself a high five in the mirror, recognize that if you felt some resistance and you moved through it, that you deserve to give yourself some really big credit for moving through it, for doing what is not always easy for us to do. And the unfortunate part, I, I am studying psychology professionally, so I can honestly say that exposure therapy works as much as people don't want to hear that. If you are afraid of heights, you climb a mountain. If you are afraid to be seen, you show up and you say, I am the one. So congratulate yourself. Make sure that you take the time to give yourself credit where credit is due. It is really huge that again, our trauma brain wants to focus on the negatives, the downfalls. Um, and so we want to counteract that by practicing and developing the muscle, right? The neural pathways that are necessary to create new thought habits around look at the good job I did. Look at how far we've come. Not allowing that trauma voice to beat you up and cultivating a new friend, right? The little, the other angel on the other shoulder that says, Hey, you did pretty good. Right. So I might go into the details of the neuroscience, but for whatever reason, because it's coming up, I'm feeling called to share it now. Just know that if you have a habit of beating on yourself, that is a very well-defined neural pathway called a dendrite in the brain that it is, it's easy because it has been so fully developed and it has obviously been used. Um, well-worn pathways are, are very easy for those electrical impulses to go down. And so if you have that habit of beating yourself up, don't beat yourself up about beating yourself up. Recognize that that's just a really well-worn neural pathway and you can create more. I do teach that in my course um, if you would like to understand how to do that, but it does take time and it takes effort. So start here today by giving yourself some credit. So tell me, was it emotional for you? How did it feel in your body to say, I am the one? Was it hard to feel it and own it? And I just want to, again, thank you for your vulnerability, because to, to be vulnerable, again, is so critically important for not only yourself, but for all of those of us who get the pleasure of being in your energy when you share yourself with us. Thank you for being willing to be seen. Thank you for your authenticity. And let me know, and not just me, but for the rest of our group, what was your biggest takeaway from yesterday? What really stood out to you? What resonated as truth in your body? Did you have that aha moment? Did you feel a shift in your body? Drop it in the comments. Let everybody know what really landed for you. And it helps not only me to continue to improve this message over time, but also it, it helps others to see how you articulate something that stood out to you. If you had an aha moment and you put it in a different way than I did, you may be the words that resonate with someone that didn't yesterday, right? So just know that, like I said, light workers are coming online like never before. And that requires us to be seen, to have this, to drop the comment in the comment box, to post the, I am the one video right? We have to be seen to be effective, to make an impact in this world. I mean, would you like to have a supportive journey or I'm sorry, a supportive family on this journey? Would you like, do you like going it alone or would you prefer, right? Do you prefer to have a family that supports you? 
Of course, I would say yes. And that is what you become when you allow yourself to show up and share your insights, right? Share what you are receiving because it helps amplify the support in this group, the feeling of community, the feeling of not being alone anymore, because we are family, truly brothers and sisters on this journey, no doubt. It's important that we love on each other and we support each other because that is one of the most critical aspects to healing is that healthy, accurate mirror, the loving relationships, the support, and knowing that it is safe in this space. And I can assure you, it is safe in this space. I very cautiously and carefully cultivate who is allowed in this group, when they are allowed in this group, and if there has ever been a comment that was not loving or supportive, that person was asked to leave. Okay, so I can assure you, you are safe here, right? And also know that as you love and support others, as you show up, you allow yourself to be seen. You say, I am the one. You take your power back. You are giving permission to someone else to do the same. Giving permission to your brother or your sister to take their power back. So many of us play small because of how other people feel. Right? When we shine, we are doing them a favor by allowing them to see how uncomfortable they are. Brain spotting helps to work through and to desensitize some of the sensitivity that we feel when we feel others' discomfort. There are ways to heal that so that you are willing to, not only willing to show up and shine, but willing to stand in the discomfort and also not feel it quite so intensely that you feel that you have to run and fix it for them. Also keep in mind that makes you part of the victim triangle. If you're not the victim or the perpetrator, but you are the rescuer, you are still in the victim triangle, right? We are not doing them any favors by rescuing them. We are only enabling them to dim their light, right? <clears throat> Do we want people to wake up? Absolutely. So then the question is, if we are the one and we are being the one for ourselves, and it helps others do the same, then why do we struggle so much? Why do we struggle to claim our abundance birthright? Have we maybe not claimed it because we don't truly believe we deserve it? Or do we doubt that it's safe to have it? Do we believe that we have to earn it or work hard for it? That's a good one. At a core cellular level, we have not embodied the aligned beliefs around deserving and worthiness. So we have to ask why, right? There's only one reason to not claim it. And that's because we question, what if I'm not the one? What if I'm the exception to the rule? What if I don't have a life purpose? What if I'm the one that is bad, wrong, and broken? Everybody else is the one for themselves but I can't be the one for me. What if I don't have what it takes? What if I fail? What if I hope again and I'm disappointed? So many of us believe that we can't handle that pain and it is so monumental and so big that the brain protects us through cognitive dissonance, not even allowing us to see that. It's very subtle. It's very sneaky. We believe in the disbelief. We believe in the fear. We believe the questioning is valid. But really all that does is create resistance. The doubt is what holds us back because we're afraid it won't work for us. But can you see where this might be playing out in your life? Can you see where you still don't believe it will work for you? The only reason we don't try to get what we want is because of our greatest fear. What if it happens? But what, but, <laughs> but what if it happens? What if you just gave it a try? Are you willing to try at least one more time? Hopefully these next three days or this next two days and yesterday will open you up to just one more try. What if you're willing to try one more time 
and it works. Wouldn't that be worth it? What if you just went for it this time? What if you went all in and you said, I am putting down all doubt. There is zero room for any form of disbelief or fear or worry. What if you just acted on your guidance as soon as you got it without contemplating it? What if you just kept trying and you never quit? What if you choose to believe that you are the one? What if you choose to believe that you can't fail if you don't quit? There isn't anything that can stop you if you choose to believe. Do you feel the resonance of the truth in this? What if you recognize that the first thought or idea that you receive is inspiration and it comes from the divine and everything after that voice is fear, ego, and trauma? What if we don't allow that space? What if we don't talk ourselves out of it? What if we don't allow the hamster to get on the hamster wheel that is going to go round and round and round and round and trap you in the prison of your mind? What if you don't wait? Have you ever struggled with overthinking? Because overthinking is the problem. We tell ourselves that we have to get ready. And what if we accept that we'll never be ready? We'll never be prepared. And we can't get ready at the level of the mind. We can't figure it out. We won't be able to develop the five-year roadmap or the major milestone list. We'll never figure it out simply by thinking about it. Clarity comes from action. And this is especially true when we are dealing with the unworthiness wound. Because all too often, the thoughts will be negative. And we'll think, I really want to have a relationship, but... What if it hurts? I really want to start a business, but what if I fail? What if I make a fool of myself? I really want to be free, but what if I stay stuck? I can't handle that disappointment. I really want to try, but what if I'm disappointed again? What if, what if, what if? Your only limitation comes from the mind. It is the veil. It is the maya. It is the illusion. The creator of the illusion is the mind. The fear, the what ifs, the rumination, the hamster on the hamster wheel. In a sense, we have one foot in the door and one foot out the door, which means we never had a chance because we hadn't fully decided. The real truth is that what we believe will work. But if we have one foot out the door, that means we have a belief it won't. The single most important thing in history is what you choose to believe. And everything stems from that. If you choose to believe it will work, it will. Our belief is everything. It shapes our reality. And our belief, it combined with our focus, literally creates worlds. Have you noticed we're in a focus and attention economy? Because it's the most valuable currency. So are you ready to choose to believe? The truth is that all strategies work in the right energy. Right, The energy of I am the one that is going to make this work will be successful if you truly believe. When we claim, of course it's going to work. Of course I make things work. Of course, eventually I will succeed. Sustained focus and attention and effort over time is the name of the game. You cannot fail if you don't quit. Everything we create stems from that place of belief. From our beliefs come our thoughts, from our thoughts come our reality, uh, from our, I'm sorry, from our thoughts come our feelings, from our feelings come our actions and our actions lead to our results, which then create our beliefs. And it's this cycle. The cycle reaffirms our beliefs. It builds or strengthens neural pathways. And from a neuroscience perspective, the brain has to match in chemistry the pictures we feed it. 
So when we choose, and it is a choice, to assign a negative meaning to something, then we are creating that. So here's how manifestation works. From a biological, physical, neurobiological standpoint, like I said, the brain has to match in chemistry the images that you give it. So that's another way of saying the belief that you feed it, right? So your belief is your foundation. Like I said, it's everything. So from what you believe will then come the thought that you choose. The brain has to match in chemistry that thought that you have fed it, which means if it's a stressful or negative thought, you're going to feel flooded with stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. That's not going to feel good. So emotion is what comes next, right? So the brain has chosen the thought, has flooded the body with the chemistry that creates an emotion, a physical feeling, which is your vibration and your frequency, which is what you emanate, which is what you attract, right? And the same is true. If I say I am the one to make this happen, I, of course, I'm going to make it happen. I'm smart. I'm strong. I'm tenacious. I've done hard things before. I want this so much that nothing can stop me. And with sustained focus and attention and effort over time, I will win. So my body is then being flooded with positive hormones, right? So happy hormones. And that creates a positive emotion. That is my frequency. That is my emanation. That is my vibration. That is my attraction point. And it is, like I said, constantly happening in the micro moments of every day thousands, nearly a hundred thousand thoughts a day. And 70% 70 of them are repeated all because we have strengthened neural pathways in our brain. And it makes it really easy for those impulses to go down those neural pathways because they've already been developed. So like I said, you can create new ones consciously. You just need to know how with sustained focus and attention over time. All right. So does that make sense? Do we understand manifestation now? Yay. Okay. The neural pathway development's a little bit different, more complex, requires more effort and time. But again, like anything, as we practice this, we're building a muscle. We learn how to ride a bike. You will never forget. And you'll be able to do this with ease over time. Right. So does that make sense? Everybody got that? Good. Okay. All right. So this is why we have to raise our vibration because we have to maintain our frequency. We have to maintain our energy. We have to calibrate and attune to the frequencies that are aligned with abundance, right? A lack of belief in myself, lack of belief in my ability, a lack of belief in life, in the world, in people will not align to abundance. We have to have the right foundation, the right frequency, and be calibrated and attuned to that frequency. So the biggest challenge for spiritual people is that we've just, <laughs> we've experienced a difficult life so far, right? And our beliefs, we were sent every message in under the sun that there was something wrong with us, that I'm unworthy. And that, of course, we're in the programming ages. It can be zero to seven. I find a lot of traumas happen in the school age years as well. So, you know, even up to 14 or 18. And if you've experienced a, a toxic relationship later in life, it can even happen later in life. The brain is like a machine. The brain is like a computer. It's constantly being programmed by the things we are putting in it into it. That's why music and media are so critically important because repetition is the key to all learning, right? So you can't help it. And that's why we have to have grace for ourselves that you were fed the message that there was something wrong with you and it wasn't your fault, but it did develop rigid core beliefs like I'm bad. I'm wrong, I'm broken, I'm weak, I'm unlovable, I'm undeserving, I'm stupid, I'm powerless. And worst of all, worst of all is that belief in worthlessness because it is the antithesis of our truth. You are one with the divine. You cannot be separated from it any more than my finger can be separate from my body. I warned you, I will repeat things that are really, really important for you to understand. We have to recognize our oneness. We have to recognize you cannot be anything less than the most valuable thing or person or being or group of beings on planet earth, right? So does any of that sound familiar, right? Those feelings of not enoughness? Of course, we've all been there. This is the human condition. 
And if we're lucky, some of us recognize in the prefrontal cortex our value and worth, but we still struggle to see value and worth in others. Or we may not be able to believe that the world is safe or that we can't trust anyone or anything. The fear of being hurt again causes the ego to rage. And we create a habit of thinking primarily about ourselves excessively. And it's done out of protection. The brain is trying to keep it safe or keep you safe. And so it's thinking about you and what is wrong with you or what, what we might need to fix or what you could have done differently all the time trying to protect you, right? But unfortunately, it takes over our lives and our self-focus can be crippling, especially when it leads to belittling and discounting and criticizing both ourselves and others, which if we're all one, which you are doing to yourself, you're doing to the other and vice versa. We have to have grace. Grace means forgiveness, compassion, understanding, patience. We are all human. The human condition is to make mistakes, is to be perfectly imperfect. So we have to have grace for ourselves and make space for being human. We have to learn how to laugh at our faux pas, learn how to bow when you trip, forgive your neighbor for their bad day, forgive the guy who honked at you because you didn't take off fast enough with the light, right? Because as you give yourself grace and you give others grace, it will then be returned to you from the other as well. And it's common, surprisingly, it's common for us to choose both jobs and situations below our capacity to stay in our comfort zone because, again, of that feeling of needing to be safe. But when we do this, when we accept relationships or jobs or situations below our capacity, below what we know we're capable of, it creates a sense of disrespect for yourself where you know, a part of you knows that you could do more, you could do better, you you deserve better. And that part of you that knows that you are not quite reaching your potential or you're not showing up for yourself or you're self-abandoning, it requires self soothing. It requires coping mechanisms because we cannot stand the pain of staying stagnant. It's crippling. So we have to numb out. Some people use food or working out or shopping. Those are the socially acceptable ones. Most common is perpetual hermit mode hidden under the guise of healing. Have you ever experienced that phase? I know I sure have. Heaven forbid we choose something to cope uh, with our struggles that actually adds to our shame. Heaven forbid that it causes us to hide even further. Substance abuse and sex, sex addiction give us yet another excuse to punish ourselves. And we may try to make ourselves feel better by overgiving or rescuing, attracting the other wounded codependent partners. But no matter how hard we try, it is still difficult to look people in the eye. Have you ever noticed that? Is it difficult for you to look people in the eye? Sometimes we over apologize for things we don't need to. Maybe we're hyper defensive in the face of criticism. Indefinite social isolation hides behind the guise of spiritual healing. And when the very thing that will heal us most, which is healthy connection, is kept from us, we go even farther into our pain. Does any of this sound familiar? All of this stems from those core beliefs of not enoughness, the lack mentality, the wound of unworthiness. And when we question our value and worth, others will too. Again, as within, so without. All is mind. Everything that you see out there is a projection of your internal world. We teach others how to treat us. And that means that when we heal, In order to heal, we have to remove the trauma from our body so we can come to the point of certainty in our value and worth, in our being the one. Certainty is needed to believe that people are safe. Safe people do exist. We need certainty so that we can attract loving partnerships, 
And we need certainty that the world can be a safe place. There is a frequency to certainty and it overrides all things. We are that powerful. We are the decider. And when we declare we are the one, the universe responds. The divine wants us to claim our power. That's part of the reason why I'm here. And we have to use it in conjunction, of course, with the will of our creator to do good things, to help others see their value and worth, to create heaven on earth. And we are of no use if we don't know the truth of who we are. How can I be the one if I don't believe I am? How can I expect others to respect me if I don't respect myself? How can I expect others to love me if I don't love myself? There is tremendous power in belief. There is tremendous power in decision. There is tremendous power in choice. What do you see? Who do you choose to be? Will you choose to see your power over your fear? And are you ready to become the decider in your life? Excellent. All right, so the next belief that we have to look at is the belief we have to do it all on our own. Have you ever noticed this belief show up in your life? How many of you are loners? I was guilty of hyper-independence for a long time until I learned that that is unhealthy and that is a trauma response. It is a belief of the ego. The belief of the ego, there's three primary beliefs of the ego. I think I might mention them yesterday. It's worth saying again that the number one belief of the ego is separation. I am on my own. It's all up to me. Because the ego believes that we are separate, it believes that it needs to create an outcome and attaches to that outcome to solve for the separation. And of course, the third is that the control of the outcome to solve the separation is completely up to me and all by myself. I am on my own and I have to fix this. All of which, if you notice, are the exact opposite of oneness. We cannot be separate from our creator, which means we cannot be separate. We cannot be lacking. We do not need an outcome. The outcome is not up to us to control. You see how this works. So know that separation is not true and ask yourself, are you willing, are you ready to acknowledge and to remember that you are not alone? You are one with the divine. That is a choice. And we will choose it today or in the next few days and just know that it will take time. We can know it without knowing it, but it will come if you choose. So the things that we struggle with are part of the human condition. You are not alone in this. Many struggle with this. And then again, it is that egoic belief of separation to believe that you are on your own or this is just you. And that's what keeps you stuck. But you cannot and should not try to heal this alone. And in fact, your creator has asked you not to, right? We're asked to come together, to love on each other, support each other, but more importantly, to surrender to the divine. Let he, she, it, they, them do the heavy lifting. Stop trying to do God's job. Stop looking outside of yourself. Stop striving. Stop efforting. It's time for rest. We need to rest in the peace and the ease and the flow of divine assistance. There is no one that can do this for us. And we are not meant to do it alone. And when I say you're perfectly imperfect, that means that there are things about you. You have strengths and you have weaknesses, right? Really, I prefer to see those as opportunities for collaboration. That just like a puzzle piece, you have parts that go in and parts that receive. We are made to do this together. We are made for connection and collaboration. Are you ready to be supported? Are you ready? to give up the lone wolf belief. In order to receive the, res the support, we have to be willing, right? We are simply asked to let go and trust and allow and watch with awe and gratitude how people show up for you, how things unfold for you. 
as we rest and sink into the beauty and the peace that comes with knowing we are meant to experience support and love and family, community, that it's safe to lean on your brother or sister for support. Recognize them as your mirror. That these traumas and beliefs and wounds hang out in our shadow. They hang out in our rearview mirror, our blind spot. And we can't see them without the mirror of the other. They will show you where you need to heal, but they will also help you when you fall down. And we are not meant to do this alone. We are not able to spot our subconscious patterns on our own. We need those mirrors. We are truly more powerful together. And again, if you have not done brain spotting with me yet, likely you're already on the schedule. If you're not, DM me. I will send you a link to schedule. You will, you will know after that session the power that happens when we are together. I love the the phrase where two or more are gathered, there I am in their midst. And that is so powerful. And it is, it's a tangible power when we come together with the intention of healing. But just know that we grew up in a hall of mirrors. The people who did not love us or care for us the way we needed them to, they reflected back to us an inaccurate measure of who we were. It's time to surround ourselves with accurate and loving mirrors. Remembering that proximity is power. Entrainment and calibration are key. And you are the sum of the people you surround yourself with. So are you ready? Are you ready to become who you were made to be? Are you ready to be supported? Are you ready to be held and nurtured and loved on? So I have to tell you a little about my story. Part of healing the wound is recognizing when the brain is not serving us, the brain's job to keep us safe is not always doing what is right for us or healthy. And it doesn't always serve us. It doesn't even serve the other, especially. Right? So the part of the brain strategy is to keep you from looking at the things that hurt you in the past called cognitive dissonance. <laughs> So we have to become stronger than the trauma brain. We have to learn to override that cognitive dissonance. And as a leader in this space, it means that I have to be willing to share with you my story, right? It's a, a bit of a gory and messy story. I don't like to talk about me, but I know that it's necessary for you, All right? It makes me a little nervous to tell the story because it's raw and it's real. And I will just say trigger warning if there's things that, and to cause anxiety for you, then maybe just check back in five minutes or so. Okay, but just so you know, a little upfront, pretty normal, every average, everyday middle class family, two siblings and a dog, right? We basically had all of our physical needs met, but it was far from an emotionally healthy environment. My father was the pastor that I mentioned yesterday, but also a narcissist. We were frequently told that we were sinners and shameful and we should beg for, for, beg for forgiveness. It was an interesting tongue twister. He used the authority that was given him to him by the church and by God to justify his behavior. We had to hope that we would be allowed into heaven and only if we suffered and self-sacrificed through this painful life. Many times I was berated for being a sinner or a bad person, accused of lying and stealing when I did not. The key word for my foundation, the one that I discovered through my healing journey was that I was a bad person. And I always felt so triggered anytime anyone suggested that somehow I was bad or I had done something bad. And you'll find in your healing journey that there are certain keywords that really cause that somatic flashback. Right. On top of that, I was berated for not being enough. I was told that I was too, too naive, too loud, too rambunctious, too um, energetic, too bubbly, too optimistic, right? Add to that because that wasn't enough. There was also emotional, physical, and sexual abuse in my childhood. I, of course, never felt truly seen, heard, cared for, or loved, let alone safe. And I was lost 
anxious, and depressed. I was desperately searching for a way to escape. And I really felt trapped in my own life and especially in my head without even realizing it. Because I would just ruminate over and over, why do these bad things keep happening to me? And I'm skimming over a lot. There is not a single thing on the list of adverse childhood experiences that was not experienced in my life. Now, I want to be honest, there's two. I have eight out of 10. If you want to take that quiz, let me know. But I just couldn't figure out how to escape this torture. And I didn't even realize that it was all happening in my own head. I just deeply wanted to live a normal life, right? It seemed everybody else was happy. It seemed everybody else had a loving and supportive family. And that was all I ever wanted friends, life experiences, the freedom to be a kid and not be worrying about these crazy things at such young ages. Instead, I felt I was carrying a 10,000 ton weight of how bad I was. Kind of that anvil hanging over your head, just waiting to drop at any moment. I was exacerbated by soul crushing belief that I was not lovable. And I became deeply curious about what it was that I was truly seeking because of this rumination in my head. I just kept going round and round and round. How do I make this pain stop? And that begged the question, which is really interesting looking back. I think it was probably 12 or 13 years old, looking back and just under, trying to understand what is it I want? What am I, what am I searching for? What do I need? And it was really surprising, you know, in my later life to look back and realize that at that young age, I realized all I wanted was peace. Peace was the number one thing because I was in such internal chaos and turmoil. I just wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel safe. I didn't want to live in that prison of worry and fear. I wanted to rest. And even at that young age, I was already in hypervigilance. I wanted to feel valued and valuable. To feel enough. No matter how good of a person I was, no matter how much I self-sacrificed or overgave, people pleased, fawned, no matter how much I conformed or how passive or easygoing I was, people continued to hurt me. I kept attracting painful relationships and situations into my life. Depression and anxiety were constantly with me, it, but it wasn't. If you can imagine being depressed and anxious most of my life and then experiencing a dark night of the soul, who would have thought it could get any worse? It truly shook me to my core. I had just come out of a relationship with yet another narcissist. I had a, a knack for attracting more of the same, but this time I became pregnant by accident. It was my worst fear. I could not have felt more damaged and broken than I did at what I thought was going to be the perfect, beautiful age of 27. I feared no one would ever love me. I lost all of my friends. I lost my job. I was completely broken and alone. I never for felt more lost and in my head than I did at that time. I was desperately, desperately trying to understand what did I do to this deserve this? I used to think that, oh, I must have been a really bad person in a past life, right? I was trying to figure out why, why didn't they love me? Why was I not enough? How could he be so heartless and cold when all I wanted to do was love him? I was literally a prisoner in my, my own mind and in my own life. Every ounce of my heart and my body ached and I didn't even know how to fix it. I had no idea. And at that point, with my 18-month-old son crawling around the house, I questioned whether or not I wanted to give up. But luckily, I couldn't do that to my son. And one day, very close to that moment, a psychologist friend recommended I see a therapist. And I got lucky, by the way. You don't always find a good one the first time around. And I did. This man truly saved my life. He gave me a book within the first couple of sessions. It, it literally opened my eyes. It was like, you know, the, the brain exploding emoji, like, that moment of like, are you kidding me? I've lived 27 years of my life and I had no idea what was happening in my head. I never saw, 
I, I felt the pain of these thoughts. I felt the torture of these thoughts, but I didn't see the thoughts. And that really blew my mind. It was like, how is this? How was I living in such a, an autopilot state? I was, I literally felt like I was in a dark room and somebody had just turned the light on. And that I'm, I'm, I'm a perpetual learner. I'm a lover of learning. I, I could not wait to dig into spirituality, ancient wisdom, astrology, personal development, psychology. Like I had to consume everything because I was like, if this has been kept from me, what else is out there? Right. And I finally started to understand how to play the game called life. Like somebody put me in this sports car, right? This Ferrari and didn't teach me how to shift. Right. And it was just so amazing. Like I found myself saying over and over and over, like, why didn't they teach me this in school? This is such critical information. How can I, how could this have been kept from me? Right. I finally understood that we are creators. We are creating through our thoughts and vibrations. And that was a freaking game changer. That what I learned from psychology and a scientific perspective made it even more tangible and made shifting and changing actually really possible, right? So I became consumed with understanding how, how do I under, how do I work with this body? How do I make the body work for me? I, I could not get enough of psychology, neuroscience, biochemistry, biohacking. My therapist jokes, he's like, you got a personal master's in this field. And that's when I finally decided to formalize it and go after the master's. Um, but that is when my life improved so dramatically. I could not believe I went from a girl and, and, you know, this sort of back in the, the past here, I'm jumping around on the timeline, but a girl who felt so depressed and was so willing to self-sacrifice. I was staying in a trailer with my boyfriend who didn't have any money because he spent it all on drugs and we had no food. There was literally a loaf of white bread and some Kool-Aid with no sugar in, in this trailer, his mom's trailer of all places. And that, you know, I was out on my own at 16 and all sorts of things. So to go from that to really understanding how to play the game called life, I was actually enjoying it, right? My, on my career leveled up. I worked for a fortune 500 and 100 company. I broke the six figure barrier. I achieved the highest levels of prestige in a product development career, which was managing a billion dollar portfolio. I got married. I had two more beautiful children. We bought the brand new 3000 square foot home. We had the very expensive cars. I had all the things, but I still wasn't quite content. There was still that level of peace and happiness missing that I had been searching for. And I had always known I was a seeker, but it was different this time. I remembered looking up at the stars as a young child and feeling like, I want to go home. There's got to be something more to this. And it was that same feeling. There's got to be something more. And that's when I questioned, again, my value and worth, but from a different perspective. Shouldn't I be happy with all the things that I have? Am I ungrateful for not being satisfied? What's wrong with me? Again, there's that question. What's wrong with me? Why can't I find happiness? But I am so grateful that I had that inner knowing, that soul urge that said, this isn't it. It took me so many years of knowing this and, and warming up to the fact that I had to leave the corporate world. And finally, years later, I would do it. And that's when I discovered the original wound of unworthiness, not enoughness, the lack of mentality. That was what was holding me back from building a business, from putting myself out there, from risking judgment, criticism, rejection, someone saying, you're bad. I didn't believe I could do it. Somehow I could manage a billion dollar portfolio for somebody else. I could come up with the idea. I could create the product and take it all the way. They say cradle to grave, right? From beginning to end, there wasn't a single problem I couldn't solve, but I couldn't do it for myself. I didn't think I could survive the rejection. I didn't think I could survive someone telling me I wasn't good enough. 
But over time, I grew into the knowing that there was no other option. I truly, I tried it. I went back. I had to try again. My soul would not let me rest. It was calling me to something greater. I had to learn how to see myself, see my truth. And funny thing was learning had lost its oomph. I didn't, I couldn't learn anymore. I had learned everything, right? The, the thrill of learning had dwindled. And that's where I came to the point where I realized we consume so much. And then there comes a point where we're full. And the only thing that's left is to share and to teach. And even though I was terrified of the possible outcome, I had to do it. My soul would not let me rest. I would never find that peace if I didn't. And so I quit. <laughs> I walked away from a six-figure corporate career while also filing for a divorce, giving up my big house, the brand new home, the fancy car. I walked away from it all. I had no way of knowing how I was going to survive, how I'd feed my kids, how I'd pay my rent. But the one thing I did have was the knowing that I had a purpose and that my creator loves me enough to provide what I need. I knew that following my purpose was the only way I would find the true peace and happiness that I was seeking. And as I began to step into my purpose, I began to taste the ecstasy that I never even knew was possible. I absolutely loved helping people. I love helping people. And I'm sure many of you, have you ever said, I just want to help people? How many of us have said that, right? In the process of researching and creating courses and videos, using the very knowledge that I gained on this journey to save my own life has also helped many others. I've learned how to heal the wound of unworthiness. Is there anything more important in life? How to unblock those things that hold us back. I worked through my own unworthiness wound but it wasn't hard this time because I had brain spotting. <laughs> I cannot speak highly enough of this modality. It made healing so pain-free and effortless. It literally shattered the glass ceiling of trauma that had held me back. And I finally began to live a life that I truly loved. Following my intuition in every moment and letting joy be my compass, I became whole again. Shedding all of the trauma responses and the character traits that became from the protection instead of from who I was made to be. I discovered we are all made perfectly imperfect for our purpose. And I began to shine brighter than ever before and become even more powerful than I ever could have imagined. But best of all, I was no longer afraid of my power. And I learned to be comfortable with making others uncomfortable. I chose the perspective of seeing that as a gift. And that created an unshakable foundation of confidence unfazed by anyone or anything, not to mention living a life of true abundance. My kids and their home were together every day. I pick them up from school every day. We go wherever we want, whenever we want. There's nothing like the freedom to work where you want to work, to, to work at the pool while your kids play with friends, to live a true life of freedom and abundance that we were meant to. And that's why I have to share this with the world. Understanding how to heal the wounds that hold you back so you can step into your purpose is life-changing, not only for the world, but for you and me. <laughs> so doesn't this sound like something you would want in your life? This is when I started to use my gifts. This is when things came online that I had no idea were available to me. I never would have guessed some of the things that move through in the healing sessions. And then I've been able to combine that with my passion, psychology, neuro, neurobiology, personal development, spirituality, biohacking, helping people. I mean, it's, it's all come together. I love to use the analogy of soup, right? This is our soup of life. This is when I say you don't have to be a tarot card reader or a psychic to have a spiritual career, you end up creating this you know, job that no one ever knew would exist because it's a combination of all of your skills and interests. And that's when things really start to click. 
there's an overwhelming sense of joy and rightness that will wash over you. This was the thing that I had been searching for. There was so much more to life than I ever thought possible. And there's a knowing that overcomes your body when you are living your purpose. Just that full body, yes, this is right. A natural high that takes over you. It's indescribable, like an out-of-body experience. (laughs) The rightness cannot be denied. And you really get in tune with when something is right or when it's wrong, because when you step out of that rightness, it is more obvious than ever. And you finally have access to the highest levels of joy and bliss and the good that you were meant to experience. So we have to stop telling ourselves the lie that the unworthiness voice has convinced us of. We have to stop asking what's wrong with me and ask what's right with me. Stop asking why can I not be content with the way things are and start listening to that urge that is pushing you to make a shift and a change. When you start to taste your life purpose, you will know this is what I've been searching for all along. The unquenchable thirst is finally quenched. And it doesn't mean it's all rainbows and sunshine and unicorns. I am not about the Pollyanna stuff. A little of this is kind of shadow work, right? But it's all worth it because you don't have to stay in it anymore because you actually move through it and it actually dissipates and leaves your body. You don't have to live there. We can create a life of our dreams. It is an evolution over time, but you will grow into it as you build it. And the building of it will shape and mold you. So it's time to level up. Are you ready? Life purpose is like ascension on steroids. It only takes one minute to step into it, but it will continue to unfold like the lotus flower. And it just keeps getting better and better. And all it takes is one yes. So I want you to look back at this moment and remember this is the moment when everything changed. This is the moment when I acknowledged that I'm the one that can do this. And I'm going to choose to do this now. And if you make that decision, what is there to stop you? So are you ready? It doesn't mean that there won't be moments of doubt. It doesn't mean that you won't wonder if you can hold it. When you realize the energy that is inside of you, those moments where you felt that full body, yes, you felt that rightness, that knowing that this is true. Once it's in you, it's so much easier to be able to tap back into. So I tell you my story because I want you to know that I'm human, that I did not have it easy. I did not have my way paved for me. And if it was possible for me, it's possible for you. You just have to find that person to calibrate to. And when you fall in love with a mentor who has done what you want to do, and they feel like home to you, there is nothing that can stop you. So humanize me as much as possible. And imagine me sitting in your living room with you or in your car with you. And then recognize what will change inside of you. I want you to feel so comfortable like I am your sister because I am. And we're just having a conversation so that we can collapse time and create hyperspeed recalibration so that we can walk together through this journey of transformation. Feel me as that girl that struggled just like you do or did so that we can do this together. And no one can tell you what is right for you or when it's right for you or on any kind of timeline. It's our job to be the decider. It's our job to be our own hero. It is not the grand gestures that shape you. It happens in the micro moments in life. And it is time to claim it. Are you ready to claim it for you? If so, I want you to make this statement out loud with me. Ready? It's kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance. (laughs) I decide right here and right now I am the one. I am one with the one. I am claiming my birthright. I am committing to reclaiming the lost parts of myself. I am committing to remembering my wholeness. I am committing 
to stepping into my purpose. I am committing to being of service and creating the new earth. I am committing to knowing my oneness with the divine. And it is our job to believe in ourselves. You are the one because no one else can be you. It is your deck of cards and you get to decide how you want to play them. Imagine in just a few short years from now that you are the one who can make people feel like the one. That you are not less valuable because you struggle. You are not less valuable because you still have fear. You are not less valuable because we're just getting started. We are the one that does it our way. And you show others how to do the same. When everyone gets to be who they are, fully in their power, the world will be a different place. So the next step is to set your mind to this commitment. Quiet your mind, connect to source, and ask for guidance on the next right step. The key is to balance action with guidance. We have to take action immediately after receiving the guidance. Start to play Marco Polo with the divine. It needs to be an echo, a constant conversation. Where are we at now? Where are we at now? Where are we at now? Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? Who would you have me speak to? What would you have me say? Because that is your source of guidance for everything that you need. This is how we get from where we have been to where we are trying to go. Are you ready? Let's do this thing. All right. So for today's activity, I would like a post, whether it's a video or a written comment, however you feel comfortable. Videos are awesome. Showing up and being seen is an excellent practice, but if you prefer to write it, that's okay too. But we'd like to hear, how will you act on your commitment today? What are your next steps? What is the guidance that you are feeling called to, right? And when you do that, shoot me a note, shoot me a DM, let me know that you've done that. And I will send you the future self progression to meet your millionaire self. Now I have found that it's actually kind of difficult to keep track of all of the comments in the group. So if you could send me the DM, that would be tremendously helpful. Uh, excuse me. Oh, we made it almost all the way through. Hold on. Just quick drink of water here. All right. Okay. And then for tomorrow's freebie, we will have the Theta Healing for Healing Abundance Blocks, which is awesome and amazing. Um, this is the favorite. This is why I save it for day three. Um, people absolutely love the Theta Healing. Um, I hear that it's often replayed on re or uh, played on replay. Um, so this is definitely not one to miss out. Tomorrow, we will also talk about how to identify your purpose and how to make a living doing it. So I can't do things half-assed. I have to offer you a complete solution. So it's sort of the success path at a very high level is healing the unworthiness wound so that you can identify your purpose, which will help you manifest abundance and therefore create heaven on earth. So part of that means being able to make a living doing it, right? So not only do I facilitate the, the brain spotting, the healing of the trauma, the reprogramming of the neural pathways, the identification of the trauma responses in your personality and your behaviors, but also how to find your path, how to step into your purpose as well as make a living doing it. So if you want something like an online business, or if you want to develop a physical product, as you know, I've said a couple of times, I've been in the product development world for most of my adult life. So um, I can teach you how to do any of those things. So we'll talk a little bit about that, not so much of the details, but mostly about how to identify your purpose and make a living doing it tomorrow. All right, I really look forward to seeing your posts. Thank you again for your I Am The One videos yesterday, and I will see you on the flip side. All right, take care, my friends. Namaste.